everyone and welcome back today we are doing another request which is outlander uh it's a request from james thank you so much james i cannot express to you how thankful i am to be watching this show i thank you <laughs> i really love it and um yeah so i had uh i think i had a warning about this episode which apparently will be uh gore or just like disturbing i don't know but thank you for the warning and um <laughs> i'm so excited kate triona it's a nice name all right all right all right all right all right what's she gonna say she's gonna go with him it would be interesting for the story if she went with them probably yeah because the garrison commander it's probably the dude who asked her like you okay i appreciate your concern lieutenant and i can assure you i'm a guest of the clan mackenzie as you wish nevertheless i'm certain my commander will wish to speak with you he's presently in residence at the inn at brockton Will you accompany me? Well, if the lady goes, I'll go. Very well then. Oh, see? That's a good scenario. But for Dougal, it was now enemy territory. And he was the outlander. Ha! Huh. Each man see to it that his horse is green and watered. I wouldn't want to trust their care to our Scottish hosts. Okay. Mean shit. Okay. Lord, may I present Dougal Mackenzie, War Chief to the Clan Mackenzie and brother to its laird. You have the honour of meeting Brigadier General Sir Oliver Lord Thomas, Knight of the Bath and Commanding Officer of the Northern British Army. War Chief, eh? I'll say this for you, you look the part. How am I to address you, sir? You can call me Mackenzie if it please you. Or if we're being formal, you can call me Chief Mackenzie. But to meet us in war and bicker leaves us error for each other as equals to the again. I don't know about the rest of you, but I fail to understand a single word the creature said. <laughs> Someone really ought to teach these people the king's English. <laughs> I believe you're speaking English, sir. Why, why do I feel bad for Dougal right now? I don't like how they're treating him. They're really condescending and just like belittling him. Don't like it. The world would make a lot more sense if everybody spoke like Londoners. <laughs> <laughs> if you wish to be a Londoner speak, perhaps you should have stayed in London. Oh! He says in Burnley, Lieutenant understood him perfectly well that time. That time? You understand when you want to understand, bitch. I would be more than happy to oblige, sir. I must say, Mrs. Beecham, we've had the most mesmerizing adventure. I don't think she's it's having me. such a great time. But... Having been brought here and having met all you charming gentlemen, I do hope that my adventure is now over. Oh, yes. Lieutenant Foster, I imagine there'll be no difficulty in escorting Mrs. Beecham to Inverness, where she may book passage to wherever it pleases her to go. No difficulty is all, sir. My lord, are you aware that it's very well. We're under attack, sir. We are not. You're putting the claret at risk. I suggest you step outside and rid yourself of half a league's worth of dust. By all means, sir. We must protect the claret. Am I mistaken, or do you two know each other? Oh my god, that's such an intense stare. Well, for a moment there, the lady did look familiar. And I could see now I was wrong. Yeah, you know exactly. I had the same exact experience. How unusual. Huh. He is very unpleasant. <clears throat> I know. What if Captain Randall accompanies you to Inverness? No, why? Or may regale him with tales of your adventure, sure to make the time fly by. No. <laughs> Mrs. Beecham amongst the savages. <laughs> <laughs> how can how can you say about Dougal 
like ill-mannered and this and that when this fucking dude his english and he's like the biggest prick in the castle wherever they are in the land but ooh dougal who stands up for himself and his people when you disrespect him in his face he's so ill-mannered fuck you <laughs> Three enlisted men have been fired upon by persons unknown just outside of town. Are these Scots rascals that bold to attack an armed British camp? I'll go. I've told you, I've medical experience. I should not tell you some of good for it. But my men would never undertake such an action without my consent. It's my all you need to worry about. The army would be looking for someone to blame. But I believe they can't hold me. Still, I'd feel better if you made yourself scarce. You take this down his throat if you can. Opium. He's gonna be tripping. Last beach of you back from saving lives. Is he gonna have a, I haven't been a scar like this since I was called up? I should hope not. I'm the only one allowed to pamper you, didn't you? Forget it. You'll get no argument from me. Oh, when you're holding a blade to my throat. Is it the same blade? Look how sweet he is. How? I know it's not the same person, but like. Would you rather bring this with you? Well, I'd risk losing it, God no. no. It's been in my family for far too long. Same, no, I shall just have to suffer through a few more rough shades. Madam. Ever since our first encounter, I have been in a state of extreme discomfort. I wish to apologize. That awful day in the woods. <laughs> Who are you? The mere memory of it leaves me shamed. Okay. I look forward to the opportunity to reveal my true nature to you. And I can only hope that honesty will be met with honesty. My honesty will match yours, Captain. Wait, what? <laughs> Is he pretending to be nice? Like, what's going on? Parlez-vous français? Oui. Oui, très bien. That was good. Et quelle défense la fait-il? Il, Il n'y a pas assez de la prostituée en vous. What? You don't have the look of a woman who would rouge her nipples. Well, for that at least, I suppose I should thank you. <laughs> These facts paint you either as an empty-headed trollop or as an agent in league with the king's enemies. If only you knew my guy. Captain, you force me to reveal things that no woman should say out loud. It was an affair of the heart. I met him in England. It's not love he felt for me, it was lust. When I refused him, he attacked me. Fled dressed early in my shift. So intense! It's like the whole episode is in one room. It's amazing, I'm loving it. Please. I would be interested in your opinion. He just captured my life for this. I think so. I'm glad. I shall call it Beautiful Lies. Shit. You wish to get to Inverness? Very well. I know that Dougal Mackenzie is raising funds for the Jacobite cause. I mean, he lacked the necessary proof to take him into custody. You will furnish me with that proof. Jacobite cause? You will not leave this room until I am satisfied that you are as innocent as you claim to be. Either you can cooperate with me, or I shall be forced to use methods less pleasant than talk. I've heard about your methods, Captain. What would you do, lay my back open to the bone? I understand flogging is something of a sport for you. Well, on the contrary, I take it very seriously. Once administered a hundred lashes upon a hundred lashes to a poor Highlander boy. Jamie. Google Mackenzie tell you that. Hmm. 
He was there. He witnessed it. This time, I would administer oh. it myself. A hundred more? You're shaking. Are you scared? Just afraid. I'll free stuff for you then, Bogan. I will break you. The thought of the whip coming down across that pitiful raw flesh. And my stomach flutter, my legs shake. Look at me! How is he still conscious? Ah! Is that enough? Is that enough? The world suddenly narrowed down to my arm and his back. The whip connecting us both. Laughter changed. First, the gasps and the sobs. I think all they could see was the horror. I. I could see the beauty. Excuse me. He's. The beauty? I saw the truth. That boy and I. We were creating a masterpiece. You think? An exquisite, bloody masterpiece. The fact that you care what I think gives me some hope yet for your soul. You say that buried within is a decent man. A man that can still choose right over wrong. I believe that part of you lives still. It would be pretty to think so. Do you think it possible that one day I might gaze upon my own reflection and not be filled with loathing? I believe. A man with your insight and self-knowledge can do whatever he wants. Perhaps I should begin by having you escorted to Inverness. <sighs> I've made you happy. Yes, you have. Mrs. Beecham and I <clears throat> require your assistance. Turn right. You have my deepest gratitude. <gasps> what the? <sighs> I need no sympathy from you, and you'll get none from me, Corporal. Have you ever kicked a wound? Sure. So it's very freeing. Requesting your presence. If you come last me, you're done here. I suppose we're done for the day. Be sure to deliver her to Fort William by sundown tomorrow. If she is not present at the appointed time, you'll be accused of harboring a fugitive from English law. I look forward to our next meeting, Mrs. Beecham. I can only legally refuse to hand you back to Randall. If I change you from an English woman to a Scot. Let's do that. Into a Scot. And the only way I can do that is for you to marry one. Jamie. No, absolutely not. The idea of grinding your corn does tickle me. But it's not myself I'd be nominating for the position. Then who? Hugo wants us to be married. I know. Well, doesn't it bother you that... that I'm not a virgin? 
As long as he doesn't bother you that I am. Oh. Alright, I'm one of the shakim, what they're doing. She's not gonna take it. He's gonna give it to her. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> oh. They don't have to like consume, right? It's not like they could not do it and just not say it. You know, if she's not comfortable, if she doesn't want to do it, she shouldn't have to. You know? But holy shit, I, look, I loved this episode, like, from beginning to end, it was amazing. Just the fact that um, the whole episode was, like, in one room, you know, when he she met the officer. I have a hard time, like, retaining when they say officer and whatever title uh, before, but you know, the guy that was sitting at the end of the table. And the way he was, like, treating... I think this... If I wasn't completely on the Scottish side, because, you know, she was trying to leave, and there was some bumps in the road with her, like, adventure with the Scottish... Uh, the clan, the Mackenzie clan, you know? And... To have, like, the possibility of her getting back to the British, like, the English, and, you know, try to go home, I would have wanted that for her because that's what she wants and I'm rooting for her, you know? So, and I had hope. I really did have hope. And the only reason why he had me fooled when he was like, oh, redemption for Blackjack, blah, blah, blah. It's because of what he said, first of all. And it just made sense, you know? She was like, you're not the first guy to be changed by combat and everything. And also, he carries the face of her real-life husband, who, what we know from him so far, and what we learned in, like, the first episode, was that... He's a decent man and she wouldn't be with him except that like after a lot of years they were trying to like find each other again and see if they were still good for each other and she kind of like didn't get the chance to decide but it was looking good. So unless there was like he's really not the man he he was before war unless there's that we kind of like we think her husband is a good guy, one of the good guys. And this dude, Black Jack Randall, he's he has his face. So we, you know, I, I wanted to believe that there was this kind of connection between the two and that she was reaching to him. But also, like, as soon as he started to come around, I was like, maybe he's playing her. Like, is he pretending to be good just so he can get information out of her and it lasted long enough and it seemed genuine enough that I was like okay he's probably like maybe she's gonna she's gonna fall in love with him and it's gonna be complicated because it's her husband's ancestor or whatever but what followed and, like, I understand the warning. I think I remember that the warning was about, like, the gory stuff. But also, like, the the fact that it would be disturbing. And this part, when he fucking hit her, just to see. And, again, it was, it was really well played by the actor. But it was so gut-wrenching and just plain horrible. It was horrible. Like, I want to cry <laughs> again thinking about it. It was... It was so fucking cruel. The way he... He was just enjoying it. You know? And the way he said... Like, have you ever, like, kick, kicked a woman? As to say that it's not his first time, you know? He, he did it before and he, he loved it. 
It was horrible. But now I am completely in favor and I've had I have a newfound respect for Dougal. I wasn't sure because but at the same time like we have to understand that for them they don't know what we know as the audience. So like we're looking and we're like, "Oh, come on, dude, she's not a spy." But he would be right to be suspicious of her. So I'm more and more realizing that his reaction, not the fact that he like tried to force himself on her in the castle when he was really really drunk. We have to understand their perspective. And I <laughs> I loved this episode, but it was it was so hard to watch. It was d awful. But anyways, I'm going to watch the next episode right now. So yeah, I'm going to <laughs> make another coffee and sit down and watch the other episode but this one was amazing and I can't believe how much I love this show I really really do so thank you so much James it's um yeah it was season one episode six the garrison officer or something like that I don't have a title in front of me just wait a second the garrison commander so um I'll see you guys for the next episode and thank you for watching bye bye